Marina Flea Market tomorrow and Sunday, Halloween dance, November 1st. You hear that, Harlem? Let's go. Good morning, everyone. You ever have one of those days where you know there's a lot of yard sales, there's uh, the flea market to check out, game stores that you're going to, and you wake up ready to get those games, you feel like it's going to be a good day, and then after wasting two hours in gas, you find jack shit. Well, that was my day today. Now, this video is gonna have pickups on it because I've picked up stuff over the last week or two, but just so many possibilities. I, I was excited to go out, I had my coffee, I was ready to rock and roll. Nothing. I'm gonna have to go to the retro store for a guaranteed buy. Like, I know what I'm picking up anyway. I'm going to get it to uh, Nuke Nukem on PlayStation 3 for a nickel. That's the Saturday Slasher. I'm going to get it for five cents. That's my pickup, but... Uh, I went to a liquidation outlet. It's about 40 minutes away from where I live. I got there, and it looked promising. Like, they had kids' Halloween costumes for, like, five dollars. Like, Iron Man, Batman, all kinds of stuff. I walked in. There were space heaters for 50 bucks. They had golf clubs, women's clothes, uh, iPad dock so you could uh, play the speaker and charge at the same time. Everything was reasonably, reasonably priced uh, for a liquidation store. So then I get to the games and they have the U draw for like the, I don't know, the 360 and the Wii. And it was like $80. They had the, you know, like you'll see in Walmart, those stylus and the the carrying case packs with like, it came with like Thor and the other one was like Dora. $65. Like if the guy wasn't up my ass following me around the aisles, which, you know, like I kind of called him on it too. Like I said, all right, you know, like back off. Like I don't need help. It made me feel like I was like a teenager again, being followed around in stores. Anyway, like, everything was super overpriced. I even asked them, like, why are the Xbox games... Like, it was $60 for Spider-Man on Xbox One, the original Xbox. $60. I had no idea what their pricing scheme was because, like, they had a, a steamer mop in the box right next to it for, like, $8. Cost, like, 40 bucks at Walmart, but these games were ridiculous. They had box stuff. Like, I saw Box Torok... I was excited, like, I was gonna pick that up. I'm like, okay, that's gonna be, like, a good deal. They had, like, the original, I guess, like, Zeller sticker on it from, I don't know how many years ago now, if you know when Torok 2 came out. It was, like, $64.99, and that's how much they were still charging for it, and the box was squished up a bit. <sighs> anyway, and then I went to a couple of flea markets, because it's getting colder, so at the, the marina... They're pulling out all the docks, and I guess all the the boat enthusiasts are getting together for one last hurrah. And same thing over there is five dollars for Xbox games, five dollars for PlayStation Two games, and you know it's not like anyone trying to like cut your throat. Like that's just what they're trying to get forward. It was you know like uh, mostly mothers and fathers and whatnot, but not to say that that's old now because I'm that age too. But uh, I don't know. That's, it, it's a lot, and, like, I didn't make a face, I didn't say anything, but, you know, $5 for an older game like that, like, for PlayStation 2 and the first Xbox, like, I really don't like paying a dollar or two for those games anymore. Uh, there's also a big box of 360 games, everything I had, like, 360 games I have no problem paying 5 bucks for, PlayStation 3 I have no problem paying 5 bucks for, but when you get to PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox... Even GameCube games, I don't like paying that much for anymore. I don't know if I got spoiled for the games that I'm looking for, or that's just too much for me to pay. Uh, anyways, this is like a four-minute rant. If you stuck around, you guys are awesome. Let's get to the stuff that I picked up this week. There's my receipt, Duke Nuke on PlayStation 3. Uh, regularly $4.99 now, and it was 99% off, so look at that, I got it for $0.05, cents. so Duke Nukem for $0.05, cents. I think I might have overpaid for it still at $0.05, cents, but uh, that's Duke Nukem, and uh, I picked up a, it's not focused, there we go, we're focused now, picked up a Mario Beanie, 
Uh, it's getting colder. Looks cool. Doesn't hurt to wear something affiliated with uh, video games too, especially when you're hunting. People know what you're looking for automatically. I picked up the 25th anniversary Super Mario All-Star. Missed it when it first came out. It's complete. It has everything in it. Um, these still go for, you know, like uh, $60, $70 on eBay from some people. I got it for, what did I pay? I paid 40 bucks for it. This is going to get played today. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, that's it. That's just crappy CDs I'm listening to. And there it is, Duke Nukem Forever for five cents. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about it. For five cents, this was actually an excellent pickup because really a PlayStation 3 game for a nickel, uh, you can't beat that. But uh, I feel bad for those people that paid retail price for this guy. Um, anyway, finally had it. I missed it the first time it came out. I don't know if it was a limited run or not. And uh, like I mentioned, I still see these on eBay because I was toying with the, the thought of picking one up or even getting the, the bonus uh, disc that comes with it but they still go like I've seen some go for 55 shipping I've seen some uh, asking 70 for shipping I got this for 40 so thanks a lot to my friends over at uh, Microju great store if you're in my area to go check out uh, the 25th anniversary Super Mario All-Star um, as most of you know, but I'll just go through it again quickly, you get Super Mario Brothers, you get the Lost Levels, Mario Brothers 2 and Mario Brothers 3, and it also comes with uh, the soundtrack, the Super Mario History, 1985 to 2010, the soundtrack CD and uh, a booklet that comes with it. So this was one of those things that, uh, not super rare or hard to find necessarily, but just something that I always wanted in my collection, and I'm really happy to have this now, even the box is very nice. So I got a couple of more packages in the mail today. Ordered them uh, through eBay and they came from Kanazawa, Japan. So this is from uh, the same people that I ordered the Super Famicom from and the shipping was a lot faster. I ordered these maybe at the end of September and they're already here. Still free shipping. If you guys are interested, I'll uh, message you the link, just ask me. Uh, the first one that came in was Pocket Monsters, Game Boy Color, which over here is Pokemon. Very nice silver box, and from the description, it was game and... Yeah. So we have our manual in color, Japanese obviously, and we have the Pokemon Silver. Game Boy Color, a lot different than what our silver look like. Let's do a comparison. So comparing the both, um, you can see right away the Japanese cart is a darker gray. It's not uh, silver speckled like the American version. You can see more of Lugia's body. It says uh, Game Boy Color up along the side. And I'm guessing since everything else Japanese uh, worked so far on the Retron 5, I'm going to test this guy out, and I'll let you know if it works, probably momentarily. So there they are side by side again. So, yep, uh, complete in box, Japanese version of uh, Pokemon Silver. Uh, nice addition to the collection, and again, uh, very inexpensive. I'm finding now, especially like learn my lesson about the Japanese text on most games, um, it's a lot cheaper if you're just playing it for the game, like uh, Kirby Superstar, uh, if you buy it here, it's like $40. If you order it even through shipping, you get the, the Japanese cart, the Super Famicom cart, it's like $15. I picked up uh, the Castlevania. You buy Castlevania now on Super Nintendo, it's anywhere from like $15 to $30, depending on where you go. Ordered it uh, through J uh, Japan, uh, the eBay site that they have, I think it was $8, and it came in that lot, so the shipping was free. Uh, next item that I picked up... Again, uh, case in point here, uh, some of these games have gone up in price, so I find buying the Japanese alternative right now saves you a bit of money. So, maybe this will get fast forwarded. Okay, so we got uh, The Legend of Zelda. So this cart was $8 plus, I think it was $5 shipping. So $13 to get The Legend of Zelda, and there's not that much text 
that's going to throw you off, aside from the beginning and uh, when you run into a few people, but if you've played The Legend of Zelda, especially the Super Nintendo version, as much as I have, it's no problem reading the text. The, the cart is obviously a Famicom cart, but with a definitely different sticker on it. The two of them compared side by side. Again, uh, aside from uh, the aesthetics of the, the cart being different gray and the shape, the, the sticker is different again. You see the Master Sword in both of them, but this one's the Master Sword with the shield in the back and Zelda written across. This one would say uh, Legend of Zelda across here with the Triforce behind. And then that scene where you get the Master Sword in that Lost Forest, you get your first sword. That seems to be the picture depicted here. So another um, uh, difference between the two, uh, the two stickers, the label art. Most people would say, why would you buy the Japanese version then? You're not going to understand the text for Pokemon. I didn't necessarily buy this one to play. This is more of like a, a display piece. This is going to look nice on uh, one of my shelves. And it's just something different to have in your collection. I think for the price, like, they got shipped together. I'm just checking, uh, I just checked my PayPal. They got shipped together, so I got reimbursed a couple of dollars. But really, it came to like... Uh, Getting a Legend of Zelda for $8 and getting the Pokemon Silver in the box for like 7 it's just nice to have in your collection, it's things to discuss with your friends, different uh, items to have. I'm a fan of Pokemon and of uh, the Legend of Zelda, so that's just different things, more things to add into your collection for each of those pieces. And uh, again, like I have to stress this, like the price point, it was a really good price. Um, and especially with the, the the time of the year and the weather now, it's you're not getting out to flea markets, you're not getting out to yard sales anymore. It's like done. At least here, up in uh, the colder parts of Canada, it's it's done now. And um, you know, retro stores guys are still hit or miss. Like I have my favorites, my local spots that I go to. But sometimes, like if I wanted to buy a Zelda right now, it'd be like thirty or forty dollars on the shelf. And if I wanted to buy Pokemon Silver, it could be anywhere from like $15 to $25 on the shelf without the box. So this is just uh, another, an, uh, I would say, uh, a more inexpensive way to go. And again, they're, they're talking points, like they're the Japanese version. It's something that we wouldn't necessarily have or something that you would find locally. Great Facebook find. These were $5 each. There was uh, quite a few games that the girl was selling, I think she was selling them for her younger brother. And what's good is uh, where she works is actually right across the street from where we live. So she just ran them over after work. So I picked up uh, Killzone 3, which is still sealed, but obviously I'm going to open it. I want to play the game. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, all for one. Uh, this one, I just, you know, it just passed me by when it came out. I heard of it vaguely. I guess they tried to save the franchise. I don't know if it's going down the drain or if people loved it. I can't say that I heard more than maybe like one review about it, just that it's a co-op. And Ratchet and Clank, Tools of Destruction. Um, so I picked these up just because I never played any of the Ratchet and Clank series. And for $5 a piece, and the, these are in perfect condition, I decided, you know, grab these ones because um, she did have a lot of games, but I'm not going to pick up Wrestling 09, NHL 010. Uh, you can find those for usually like a dollar each now. So those were Facebook pickups. For my Walmart pickups this week, I uh, went back to the liquidation side. And you can see like, it's been taped back together, the cardboard seen better days. But uh, $5, uh, another pretty good pickup. Uh, I guess I'm collecting these now. I kind of didn't want to, but it just started happening. This is a bulkhead from the, the Beast Hunters Transformers Prime series. So I think that puts me at like five or six of them, so I think I'm just going to wind up collecting the whole series, maybe put them away for my kids one day, or give them to my nephew. Uh, for a dollar, I picked up a, I guess supposed to be a Friday the 13th mask. I grabbed this because, you know, Halloween's coming around the corner, and I like to change my masks and costume as much as I can during the day, just to keep scaring the kids at the school. Also, uh, one of my costumes is gonna, um, going to be Dracula, blah, so I had to grab the teeth and the fake blood uh, for a buck. I don't, Jason was a dollar too, I don't know if I mentioned that. And I picked up The Walking Dead uh, Season 2 for the PS4. Uh, I'm going to open it, I'm going to start playing it today. 
I played through it already, yes, on the 360, but I really enjoyed it. It's one of those games that it's not about the achievement or the trophies that you get. It's really a good story. Some people argue that, no, it's not a game, it's just point and click. Um, I'm not going to open up that can of worms, but for myself, I enjoyed it enough to buy it again. And I'm going to go through, and it's one of those stories, if you haven't played it, where you get different options. You can save uh, different people, help different survivors. You could be the good guy, you could be the bad guy. There's dick answers, there's really, uh, you know, like, train, help everyone out answers. And um, I'm just excited to go back through the story again, because it was that engrossing that I have to play it again. Uh, another quick addition. Um it takes up a lot of room. I don't know if I'm going to fold it down eventually, but it's one of these display boxes for Destiny. Um, you know, he had a whole bunch of them there, the guy at the, the store. Just one of those uh, tells when it's available, etc. I'm like, I'm sure all of you guys have seen it. So I got that for free. And uh, it's kind of ironic now because I am tired of Destiny. I don't know if everyone else feels like that, but I just feel like I've run out of things to do. I hit level 22 and it's just every time it's grinding and it feels like it's doing the same missions over and over so maybe when it hits some DLC I'll get back to it but for now I'm I'm done with Destiny the next little bundle of stuff I gotta thank my brother Jordan for he was digging out stuff in the storage room I don't know if they're putting uh, hiding Christmas presents so already for my nephew but he found uh, a copy of Gyromite and a copy of Kung Fu now I know everyone's gonna be like, you don't have Kung Fu, I had Kung Fu, I don't know what happened to it, it might have just disappeared in the move to this game room, or I might have even traded it off before, but uh, Kung Fu was back, Gyro might, uh, thanks a lot Jordan. Also, uh, he was out the other night, and it had a $40 sticker on it, but uh, he wound up grabbing it for me for 20 bucks. I don't know why. He sent me a picture, and it's uh, the Mi Wii wireless game. It's like a fake knockoff, uh, uh, I guess, a Wii. So he sends me a picture of it, and he's like, Hey, I'm in the pharmacy, and they're selling this for 20 bucks. So I told him, like, grab it, of course. Like, this will go in the game room. I don't know what it is about dumb things like this, but I like to collect them. I like to mess around with it. It says that it has 85 games in it. It's uh, really dumb looking. Uh, I'm going to bust it open fast and show you a couple of pieces of it. So you can see that they tried to make it look like the Wii that uh, I guess this would be quote unquote the console, there's a large power button here you have uh, your controller with uh, six buttons, start and a d-pad the attachable tennis racket, there's ping pong paddle rackets on there, there's uh, a golf club your power supply, a baseball bat and then these MiWi controllers that need to be plugged in, now it's not uh, um, it's not the same, uh, obviously, uh, motion control as uh, the Wii would be. It's not that advanced. It's more of like that infrared light where you have to be aimed right at the sensor, kind of like how um, like the Rectron 2 was, or even like um, the wireless Sega controllers. So I'm going to try this. I might need help from my friend Jack Daniels to play through it, but I'm definitely going to try this. and. Uh, I'll probably share a little bit of a video in coming up uh, upcoming episodes to see what it's like. You know, I can't wait to play Cups or Obot War, Slot Machines, Brain Challenge, Poa Poa. What else am I looking forward to? Warehouse Keeper. Oh my God, Warehouse Keeper. That's gonna rock. West Cowboy, Big Shootar. This is very poorly translated to English. Extreme Memory, Collect the Eggs, Bumper Balls, Bumper Balls, and many more. Oh god, this is going to be awesome. Oh, some of the crap I collect. Uh, no. $20, it'll be fun. I, I swear it's going to be fun. I feel like I'm trying to convince myself saying that, too. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching, liking, commenting. If you're new to the channel, why not hit that subscribe button? We'll see you next week.